Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> One second. So, good afternoon, all, and welcome to the Talk to Expert program. Today we have with us Dr. Vinay Kariwala from Sankhya Sutra Labs. Before proceeding, I would like to brief about eye stamp. Indian Science, Technology and Engineering Facilities Map, eye stamp. It is a national program of Government of India for shaping the R&D infrastructure and supports academia and industry to achieve the goal Aat Nirbhar Bharat. It holds the database of functioning R&D equipment and facilities from government or private funding with options to researchers to check the availability and operational status of geographically dispersed facilities and reserve the most suitable one online and pay per use through the portal. Digital catalog on iSTEM portal is available with 700 technology and technology products as mandated by the Empower Technology Group to help academia and industry to decide the thrust areas and use the available indigenous technologies products to manufacture the required infrastructure for the society. ISTEM is striving to create the pool of skilled manpower and the job opportunities for them in scientific establishment. It's an IP protected, dynamic, interactive and user friendly web portal. Today we have with us Dr. Vinay Kariwala. Dr. Vinay is the head of business development at Sankhya Sutra Labs in Bangalore. Before joining Sankhya Sutra Labs, he has worked with ABB India in various roles involving research, product development, and global technology management in the areas of industrial automation and digitalization. Dr. Vinay was a professor of chemical engineering at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore during 2006 till 2011. He got his doctoral degree from University of Alberta, Canada. He has published one book, several book chapters, and 100 plus publications in journals and conference proceedings. Today, Dr. Kariwala will be talking about latest Boltzmann method, LBM, which is an emerging technique for high fidelity in aerodynamics and multi-physics simulation. LBM achieves high level of accuracy and reliability and scales linearly with the available computational power. An overview of innovations embedded in Sankhya Sutra Lab LBM technology will be provided. He will also demonstrate the potential of LBM using multiple examples from various industries, including aerospace and defense, automobile, process, and semiconductor manufacturing. Over to you, Dr. Vinay Kariwal. Thank you very much, Dr. Shailesh. Can you hear me all right and see my video? In a moment, sir. <clears throat> okay. I think you need to give me presenter rights. Yeah. Yeah. Please share. All right. So I have shared the yeah. screen now. It is visible. All right. Thank you very much. So mm -hmm. first of all, uh, I think I, I'd like to second what Dr. Shailesh said about iSTEM. Very impressive numbers in terms of the equipment and software that is available and number of institutions which are involved. Uh, I would also request all the attendees to look at participation in ISTEM uh, very closely. Uh, and secondly, many thanks to ISTEM for providing this opportunity to talk about what we are doing at Sankhya Sutra Labs. Uh, let me clarify in the beginning, the uh, flavor of this talk is uh, more scientific than product advertisement. And the intention of requesting for this talk to Dr. Shailesh was also to share with all of you about the kind of uh, research activities and development activities that are happening in India in a relatively exciting space. Uh, so, yeah, as Dr. Shailesh mentioned, I'm going to talk about something called lattice Boltzmann method uh, for high fidelity simulation. So don't worry if you are not familiar with uh, what lattice Boltzmann method is. I, I will uh, talk about it in just a little while. Uh, 
uh, but uh, yeah, high fidelity simulation, you see some examples right here. Uh, what you see on the left, this is a delta wing uh, used in defense industry, for example, uh, an automobile. And, and this is finally a, a gasification reactor taken from oil and gas industry. And these pretty pictures, they illustrate the kind of simulations which can be done, uh, which are helpful in making decisions related to design operation and uh, troubleshooting in, in many cases for these uh, products and processes. Uh, by the way, I have mentioned my email address here, uh, quite simple, vinay at sankhyasutralabs.com. Uh, in case we run out of time uh, and you have a question, please feel free to drop me a note. Uh, of course, you can also drop me a note in case this area excites you uh, and you'd like to have a copy of the slides. So with this, I move forward. Uh, Dr. Shailesh, can you please confirm you are able to see the second slide now? Yes, it's on second slide about Sanketud Labs. Perfect, perfect. So before getting into the topic of Lattice Boltzmann method, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about Sankhya Sutra Labs. Uh, the company started in Bangalore. Uh, those of you who are from Bangalore, you would be aware of this institute called Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research in uh, North Bangalore. Uh, so this company was the first startup out of JNC ASR uh, in 2015. Uh, started with uh, funding from friends and family. Uh, we, we got some initial projects, but a major breakthrough in the history of company was in 2019, when Reliance Industries decided to uh, buy a majority stake in the company. So officially, we are a subsidiary of uh, Reliance. And uh, starting from a team of about five people, uh, now we have grown to 40 people, uh, although yeah, in the end we are developing a software for computational fluid dynamics, we do not qualify as an IT company. We are a, a very much a technical company that you can probably guess from the mix of people that we have. Uh, most of the people in the company are doing development. I would say about 75 to 80 percent of the people in the company are doing development. They have graduate degrees from leading institutes in India. And as of today, we are very proud to say that we are the only Indian company with an indigenous multiphysics uh, solver. What multiphysics is, I'll, I'll talk about in just a little while, but to give you an idea, yeah, many different physics flow, thermal reaction and all coming together. Uh, not only we have developed the software, but uh, our co-founder, uh, this chap that you see here, Professor Santosh Ansumali, who is still a faculty member at JNC. He has, work, he has been working in the area of Lattice Boltzmann method for 22, 23 years now. So the work that Santosh has done at JNC and subsequently at Sankhya Sutra Labs, uh, that is what uh, is the basis of our research. And again, happy to report that uh, IIT Bombay recently uh, gave an award to Santosh uh, for translating theory into practice. So he is the first recipient of uh, this award given by IIT Bombay. Now, those of you who are from the field of simulation, you would understand that uh, uh, most of this simulation tools, or rather all of the simulation tools are memory bound. So if one wants to do large complex simulations, you need a lot of compute. Uh, we are happy to report that we have the largest uh, cluster, HPC, in private sector in India. Overall, it is number six. So it's the combination of our efficient algorithms and optimal hardware uh, is what we are trying to bring to the market. Uh, we already have customers in India as well as across the globe. Another key milestone in the history of the company was when we did a research agreement with US Air Force Research Labs in 2021. 
this is strictly a research agreement and not a commercial agreement. Nonetheless, it helps in refining the technology for aerospace and defense industry in this particular case. So all in all, Sankhya Sutra Labs, uh, the name itself literally translates to numerical methods. Uh, it's a fully Indian company uh, trying to make a sincere effort in the field of deep technology. So those of you who are considering uh, venturing out on your own, starting something on your, on your own, uh, you can look at us as, uh, as an example, uh, hopefully drawing some inspiration. All right, now coming to the topic uh, for today, uh, I think I'll be teaching the choir here, but nonetheless, it's, it's good to uh, do a quick recap. If you're trying to design an industrial product or process, uh, in no case, almost never, you would just go all out and start building a hardware prototype uh, and iterate on the hardware prototype. So what I mean is you, you would not uh, build a hardware prototype, test it if it does not meet the requirement. Sorry. Okay. I think my permission to present is removed. I can't hear you. Okay, yeah, it's back now. All right, so I hope you can see the screen again. Uh, so yeah, one would not just jump into building and iterating on hardware prototypes. The use of simulation technology or rather model-based simulation technology is uh, used almost in all cases, uh, which helps in reducing uh, the cost, effort, and time to market, right? So one would uh, do these experimental checks, this testing of the product or process being designed uh, on a computer, and once the design is satisfactory, only then one jumps into doing a hardware prototype. So this whole area of model-based simulation can also be seen as digital prototyping. Uh, I'll... I'll use some examples. So whether it is uh, aerospace industry, that's the example that you see here, where many, many simulations are done, we iterate over the design uh, to evolve the design. Now the keyword here is uh, the design of this relaunch vehicle uh, evolves over time. For your information, this example was taken from a presentation made by uh, V. Ashok, who is from uh, ISRO, ISRO, uh, presentation done in August, that is the last month at AESI CFD Symposium, where he was talking about some developments at ISRO. So what uh, is being shown here in any industrial design, uh, in any design of any industrial process or product, you typically start with uh, an initial concept and then the design slowly evolves over time. Uh, it, it is not that one tries to come up with the final design in the first stage itself. Second point is uh, when you are at an early stage of design cycle, the focus is more than often on uh, eliminating design alternatives or design configurations which will not work. And then as you move along the design cycle, you add more and more details in the case of a relaunch vehicle towards the end, one would go for wind tunnel testing. And finally, of course, flight test. Uh, now, if somebody wants to use uh, simulation methods, uh, which aid in the design of this relaunch vehicle, the focus has to be as per the objective that at initial stage, uh, there could be thousands or even millions of design alternatives and our goal should be to screen large number of design alternatives quickly without focusing on uh, the fidelity and accuracy. Whereas as you move towards the final uh, stages before one goes for wind tunnel experiments in this particular case, one would have narrowed down the design space to a few promising alternatives. And here, uh, detailed evaluation would make more sense to avoid surprises during wind tunnel or flight test. 
Uh, I'm not sure whether there are any chemical engineers in the audience, but I am a chemical engineer, so I was tempted to use an example from process industry. Uh, this is flow sheet design for vinyl chloride production. This example is taken from this famous book by Cedar, Cedar and Levin. So uh, you may not be able to read everything, but uh, I'll, I'll quickly explain. In the design of a chemical process, or a typical chemical process involves unit operations like reactor, separator, and then there are uh, unit operations for heat exchange and uh, pressure maintenance and all that. So one typically starts by looking at various alternatives for reaction and separation, and then the flow sheet evolves over time that you see in the middle of the screen where a lot more unit operations are added. This is all conceptual design. And as the design process moves forward, one would add, for example, control valves, add the uh, control system, and, and so on and so forth. But once again, what you saw on the previous slide for a relaunch vehicle, uh, you start with something simple, and then you evolve the design as you move forward. And once again, during the initial part of the design, the focus on is on eliminating design alternatives which will not work. Uh, or in other words, you want to screen a large number of design alternatives quickly. And as you move further and further, in this case, before one moves towards um, commissioning of the plant, physical buildup of the plant, yeah, it, it makes more sense to run simulations uh, which provide high fidelity results, right? So, this is what I'm saying here is not just limited to aerospace and process industry. This is fairly common. And we have to keep this point in mind uh, when we are trying to use digital prototyping and or, or uh, model-based simulation techniques. Uh, the physics that we are dealing with in this talk is, of course, uh, uh, fluid dynamics. Now, fluid dynamics, uh, you would recall Navier-Stokes equations are used to uh, represent uh, fluid dynamics and the equations are complex, so one cannot expect to have analytical results except a few uh, academic examples. In real world, uh, to understand the flow or fluid dynamics, uh, one approach is to use experiments. What you see here is a Formula One car inside uh, a wind tunnel. Uh, as before, uh, the extensive use of wind tunnel is not uh, feasible because of cost implications, because of the time it takes, and that's where the automobile industry in this case uh, has already used computational fluid dynamics techniques uh, over the past, past few decades, leading to reduction in time, effort, uh, and cost. So, if we bring back that insight we had that one needs to look at the objective uh, of the design stage at which we are. Uh, when it comes to CFD or computational fluid dynamics, uh, that same idea of course carries over. And that is the reason why if you look around, you will see that there are a lot of different techniques available out there. Uh, actually, this the, the, the set of alternatives which I'm showing on the left-hand side of the slide, by no means this is uh, complete. You, of course, have inviscid methods, uh, panel methods, which provide even lower uh, fidelity as compared to RANS. RANS here, of course, stands for Reynolds Average Navier-Stokes Equation, uh, which kind of gives you idea about uh, the steady state features of uh, flow dynamics. So, uh, in terms of the hierarchy, uh, one can use panel method, which is not shown here, or use RANS. If dynamics is really important, the next level could be unsteady RANS. Uh, if somebody wants even better accuracy, one can start looking at large eddy simulation, and then move towards uh, direct numerical simulation kind of approaches. So, so the key message on this slide is there is a variety of techniques available out there in this pyramid as you 
uh, move up from RANS to DNS, you can expect better accuracy, but of course, you need to have higher amount of compute available. So going back to our earlier insight, where at the early stages of design, you want to do quick screening, you want to evaluate thousands or lakhs of alternatives in a short amount of time. And then as you move forward in your design cycle, you want to do design, uh, sorry, detailed evaluation of a few chosen alternatives. So the same thing is being illustrated here uh, for a CFD problem. Uh, what you see here is a water jet, uh, and if somebody uses dance, uh, yeah, this captures the uh, average features of the flow, whereas if somebody uses large eddy simulation, more details are captured as one may expect. So all in all, uh, instead of uh, getting into academic discussions of which method is better. Uh, what I'm saying here is one should keep the objective of simulation in mind and choose courses for courses. Uh, lattice Boltzmann method is a, a method that lies, uh, let's come back here, this lies somewhere between large eddy simulation and uh, direct numerical simulation. A direct numerical simulation, as you recall, does not make any approximations. It tries to resolve uh, all the way down to the Kolmogorov uh, level, whereas in large eddy simulation, you will ignore eddies beyond a certain size. Okay, the sharing is gone again, sir. Uh, so LVM that way is... Sorry, Dr. Vinay, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, you need to share again. Yeah. So let me make you... There is some glitches going on at the moment in our software. So anyways, now you try again sharing your slide. Yeah, it should yeah, be perfect. Go ahead. So LBM lies somewhere in between LES and DNS. Now, uh, LBM, uh, this method itself uh, was derived in uh, late 80s. Uh, and I, I would say many of you might have heard about LBM, uh, I'll, I'll make an attempt to uh, give you a layman's level overview of what this method is about. So let's start with the macro scale or macroscopic description of a fluid. That is what you see here. And as I mentioned earlier, Navier-Stokes equations can be used to describe uh, the macroscopic behavior of a fluid. But as we know, uh, what we see as continuum, if you really zoom in at, at some point at uh, micro scale or, or below, uh, we are all dealing with molecules and particles. In fact, the room in which uh, you are sitting, yeah, there are uh, 10 to the power 30 or more particles flying around, colliding with each other. So the uh, basis of lattice Boltzmann method lies in kinetic theory of gases proposed by Ludwig Boltzmann, whose picture you see on the right hand side of the screen. So the method kind of starts with a, a particulate description, microscopic description of particles, where particles are moving in all directions, colliding with each other. Uh, but we are not interested in uh, microscopic behavior of particles when we're doing CFD simulations, we are interested in macroscopic variables like density, pressure, momentum, energy, and so forth. So to do these kind of simulation, uh, tracking 10 to the power 30 or more number of particles is uh, computationally intractable. And that is where lattice Boltzmann method comes in. So uh, to make the, the method uh, more practical, there are some simplifications that are used. Uh, so I'd like to pay, I'd like to request you to pay some attention. The first simplification, again, recall that we are not interested in what is happening at uh, individual particle level. So that's where you can, we, we consider what can be called pseudo particles, which can be seen as a large number of particles which are clumped together. Mathematically, they are represented by probability uh, density functions. 
and this makes sense once again because we are not interested in the behavior of individual particles we are interested in the behavior of ensemble of particles now uh, this definitely helps in keeping the method tractable some other simplifications that are made in reality the molecules which are moving around you uh, they can be anywhere in the 3d space uh, and they could be moving with uh, any velocity uh, so in lattice boltzmann method the the location of particles is restricted to a predefined uh, lattice so that is what you see here for a two dimensional uh, flow and lastly the instead of allowing the particles to have any arbitrary velocity the set of velocities that can be taken is restricted to a finite number so with these simplifications what we get it's called a lattice boltzmann method of course there is more but in a nutshell these are the simplifications which are made uh, which makes the method tractable uh, now the particles are tracked at every time step there are two operations which need to be tracked one the particle stream or they um, advect in 3d space and the second is the particles collide with each other and finally uh, the macroscopic uh, Velocity, the macroscopic quantities of interest are calculated by taking moments of the probability density function. Right? So that's the essence of uh, lattice Boltzmann method. An important point to note is while we are making simplifications as we move towards a pure physics based approach to something that is computationally more tractable, uh, lattice Boltzmann method uh, tries to preserve the quantities of interest uh, during the selection of velocities right so it is not just a plain simple uh, numerical approximation the physics of interest and i stress on the word physics of interest that is still uh, preserved and physics of interest once again in our case is density pressure momentum energy and th th things like that so just to sum up uh, lattice boltzmann method we are ultimately interesting, interested in solving the Navier-Stokes equation to get macroscopic quantities of interest. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum lies the particle methods. Lattice Boltzmann method is somewhere in between. It's a mesoscopic scale method where some uh, simplifications are made while preserving the physics of interest, where particles move and collide on the uh, lattice and in the long time long wavelength limit it can be shown that the solution one approaches by solving or using the lattice boltzmann method it approaches navier stokes equation uh, in this sense lvm can be seen as uh, an alternate means of solving navier stokes equation recall typical approaches for solving navier stokes equations are based on numerical uh, discretization for example finite element finite difference and finite volume so that way, lattice Boltzmann method takes a more physics-based approach to solve Navier-Stokes equation. And that's where the key strength of lattice Boltzmann method lies. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the method itself, uh, it uh, emerged in 80s. And that's what you see here. What I'm showing here is the list of scientific publications, refereed scientific publications on uh, LBM. So starting from a single digit number uh, about 25 years uh, back or, or maybe a little more, you see in 2015 uh, the number of scientific publications grew to about a thousand uh, and I did a check in uh, Google Scholar in 2021 uh, the number of uh, publications related to lattice Boltzmann method was 8644. So let's say we can round it off to 10,000. So that's where you can clearly see that the method is gaining traction in uh, academia, which is reflected in the number of uh, scientific publications. It is not just academia where the method is getting traction. Uh, this is a list of uh, some uh, commercial and open source software which are based on various flavors of lattice boltzmann method uh, first and foremost the first commercial solver 
developed by Exa called PowerFlow, which was later acquired by the SOS systems, uh, Cadence, something from ANSYS, and I would say relatively smaller companies, including Sankhya Sutra Labs. And there are a bunch of open source uh, tools like OpenLV, Palabos, uh, NASA also developed a lattice Boltzmann based tool like Lava. And this list by no means is complete. There are many more implementations out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, coding lattice Boltzmann method is uh, relatively straightforward uh, because the operations are uh, local. Uh, so it is possible to get a working code of lattice Boltzmann method going with uh, minimal effort. Of course, the effort to make it optimal uh, can be much higher. So there are lots of uh, let's say lattice Boltzmann implementations available out there and the number is growing with time. So based on this observation, we can safely say that lattice Boltzmann method has come out of age and it is time to uh, seriously start looking at this method for LES level or high fidelity simulations. The adoption of lattice Boltzmann method is also aided by the fact that uh, uh, the compute that is available for that is required typically by lattice Boltzmann method it is becoming cheaper uh, which has also helped in adoption of this method uh, of course there are commercial and open source software out there the number of publications is growing as i mentioned earlier at Sankhya Sutra Labs and in the lab of uh, Professor Santosh Ansumali, uh, research has been ongoing for more than two decades. So the version of lattice Boltzmann method, which we call Taral, Taral is fluid in Sanskrit. Uh, there are a number of innovations, some of which are uh, shown here. So first of all, for any numerical method, numerical stability is of uh, great importance. So this method has been shown to be uh, numerically stable using principles of second law of uh, thermodynamics. Uh, to be more precise, the concept of entropy has been utilized. Uh, in that sense, the flavor of lattice Boltzmann method that we use, it's entropic lattice Boltzmann method. Uh, in any CFD method, meshing is a key step. Uh, there are some concepts from computer vision has been utilized to come up with uh, uh, good methods for meshing. To be more precise, in lattice Boltzmann method, uh, one uses a, a Cartesian or rectilinear mesh. Uh, we use what is called a body-centered cubic mesh. And as you can see in this example, uh, to carry the curvature of uh, a sphere, simple Cartesian or simple cubic mesh uh, results in a lot of error. With the same number of mesh points, body-centered cube captures the curvature of uh, sphere better. Uh, when I show, when I've shown this example to folks in the past, uh, they have not believed that in both cases the number of mesh points is equal, but it is actually the case here. Then, in many practical problems of interest, one deals with. Uh, high Reynolds number and high Mach number. High Mach number is of course more relevant for uh, aerospace and defense industry, where one may be interested in transonic, supersonic, and hypersonic uh, flow regimes. So um, some theoretical work has, has been done uh, so that we can simulate uh, transonic flows without gimmicks. And uh, work is ongoing to handle supersonic flows. And last but not the least, uh, there is a lot of innovation that has gone behind coming up with uh, optimal data structures and task decomp decomposition uh, to handle the mem memory bandwidth optimally to make the software linearly scalable. And most of this work has been published in leading journal papers. Uh, for example, physical PPRL, scientific reports, and uh, Journal of Fluid Mechanics, which uh, you, you can look at. So all in all, the message is 
uh, the theory of uh, lattice Boltzmann method is uh, evolving and uh, we are making an attempt from our side to translate it to a commercial code. Now, so far I have only spoken about flow, flow dynamics, which is important, uh, but in uh, many practical problems of interest, there are many other physics uh, that have to be taken into account. So we have started this journey of uh, developing solvers for many other physics. For example, heat transfer, that is conduction convection and radiation, uh, particle dynamics uh, in propulsion systems or in um, uh, fluid catalytic crackers, reactions have to be taken into account. In a lot of cases, you deal with gas liquid systems or gas solid systems, so that's multi-phase. Uh, those of you who live near the airport or HAL in Bangalore, or for that matter, airport in any city, you would have been bugged by the large amount of noise that a plane makes, so that is acoustics, how do you handle that? So we, we are making an effort to go beyond just flow dynamics and have uh, capabilities for multi-physics, where multiple physics uh, have an interplay to simulate the behavior of a complex process accurately. Uh, I briefly spoke about it, last but not the least. I, I mean, I spoke a lot about the numer numerical methods, but even on the hardware side, we have the largest uh, cluster in India. It has uh, about 33,000 uh, cores with 1.2 petaflop, uh, petaflops of compute and a large amount of memory, uh, which of course helps in moving the technology forward. So with this introduction, I'll, I'll jump into the second part of the talk, which is uh, demonstrating to you that uh, whatever I've presented so far, it is not just a theoretical concept, but uh, indeed this is something that is possible in practice and is useful. Uh, so the first example that I'd like to use, it is from uh, aerospace and defense industry. And what you see on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, this is an aerofoil. Uh, essentially, you can see this as a cross-section of the wing of the uh, airplane. So there are many, many standard uh, airfoil shapes available out there. What you see here, it's called NACA 0012. Uh, now, uh, in the for, for, I mean, aeroplanes fly because they generate lift, uh, but as you change the angle of attack, basically the, the pitch of the uh, aircraft, often you reach a point where the lift does not increase anymore, and that's where you can uh, hit the condition which is called stall. So it's a from an from aircraft flying point of view, this is a very, very critical phenomena and if not handled properly, uh, it can uh, lead to rapid decrease in the altitude of the aircraft. So anyone designing an aircraft has to be aware of this phenomena of stall to be able to handle it uh, efficiently. Now from a simulation point of view, uh, why stall sim uh, simulation is a challenging problem as you see here. Uh, the flow separates. Uh, when the angle of attack is uh, smaller than the stall angle, you get a nice attached flow and methods like RAMs can be used to simulate uh, those conditions quite accurately. But when stall conditions are approached or reached, then the flow starts to separate, uh, which makes it challenging for uh, a numerical method to simulate this phenomena. So given that we follow physics and an important point, <clears throat> uh, those of you who are in the field of CFD, you would know that when you are solving Navier-Stokes equation uh, through discretization, one needs to close the set of equations by using a turbulence model like K epsilon or SST. The beauty of lattice Boltzmann method, or in particular entropic lattice Boltzmann method, is that one does not 
have to use an explicit turbulence model. The, the concept of entropy introduces viscosity in the system providing stabilization. Uh, so here we do not use any explicit turbulence model and then if we look at the, the pressure distribution on the surface of the airfoil, that is what is shown on the, in the right hand side plot, you see that the simulation results, they match the experiments quite closely. Uh, this is of course one of the many examples that we have looked at for uh, stall simulation and in all cases we have seen good results. Uh, we have also tried uh, simulating stall for not just an airfoil uh, but uh, uh, UAVs with wingspan of a couple of meters uh, and the observations are similar. So all in all what we can say is that uh, when you are dealing with separated flows, uh, lattice Boltzmann method can be seen as a promising alternative to capture the physical phenomena. <clears throat> a second example taken from aerospace industry that is of aeroacoustics. Uh, in industrial practice, the noise may be generated due to vibrations or it may be flow induced. Uh, here what we are interested in aeroacoustics, so those of you who are uh, aware, uh, of course, the aerospace industry is always trying to push the boundaries. We all want to get from point A to point B faster. Uh, a key reason for increasing, or rather a key bottleneck for increasing the uh, speed of aircrafts is uh, the very large amount of flow-induced noise that gets generated. Of course, the same is true for automobiles as well. Uh, all of us want to have maximum comfort uh, when we are sitting in the car or if you stay close to a highway yeah, you would have of course noticed the amount of sound that car movement generates so in all these cases the aircraft manufacturers or automobile manufacturers they indeed uh, take this into account uh, when they are designing the uh, aircraft or the vehicle and once again uh, predicting the amount of flow induced noise uh, that would be produced uh, is uh, important and can be challenging to simulate accurately numerically. The example that I'm showing here uh, that is uh, from aerospace industry where you have a fighter aircraft and uh, one would drop a, a missile from this aircraft and as when the missile is dropped very quickly it attains very very high speeds which leads to flow induced uh, acoustics can also be seen as near field vibrations. Uh, what you see here this is an, a benchmark problem called M219 open uh, cavity. Uh, the Mach number here is in the transonic regime uh, about 0.85 with Reynolds number of 6.7 uh, million. The vorticities that are seen in this uh, open cavity are shown uh, in this animation here. More importantly what you see on the right hand side are comparison with uh, experimental results. So in the top plot uh, you see uh, a comparison between the simulation and experimental results for the average value or rather RMS value of the pressure. Uh, where we see an almost uh, perfect match with accuracies of the range of 2 to 3 <clears> percent. <throat> then to capture the uh, main modes of uh, the aeroacoustic phenomena, one can look at the power spectrum or what is called sound pressure level. Uh, so here once again the uh, red curve shows the uh, simulation results whereas the blue curve shows the experimental value uh, and there are 10 such sensors located in the wall of the cavity and again you see a, a, a very good match. So this uh, simulation again shows the potential of lattice Boltzmann method uh, for aeroacoustics and an important point uh, to note here is typically one needs to couple a Poisson solver 
with uh, flow simulation to get aeroacoustics. In the case of Lattice Boltzmann, it's a transient simulation method. So one can just post process the flow simulation data and get uh, aeroacoustics results. Uh, I'm looking at the clocks. I'm going to skip one example from automobile and directly come to Windsor model. So this example is from automobile industry. Uh, in uh, 2021, there was a workshop held in Berlin, Germany, uh, called Second Automotive Prediction Workshop. Uh, both in the case of aerospace industry and automotive industry, uh, such workshops are organized, or several of these workshops are organized every year, where the purpose is to benchmark and compare the performance of uh, different CFD simulation tools available out there. So from Sankhya Sutra, we participated in such a workshop last year. So what happened in this workshop, this was a blind uh, simulation workshop in the sense that the prior to the workshop, the workshop organizers shared the CAD model and the flow conditions. Uh, and there were a total of 37 participants. All of them had a couple of weeks to apply their simulation tools and then submit the results to the workshop organizers. Uh, while the CAD geometry and the flow conditions were provided, the correct answer uh, was not provided. Correct answer here is the drag and lift values. And then on the day of the workshop and the presentation, uh, the organizers compared this uh, the various results and presented to all the participants. Uh, now, if uh, one is using RANS kind of approaches, it has uh, turbulence models with tunable parameters. So some of the some of the participants submitted multiple entries because these simulations were done with different values of those tunable parameters. Whereas in the case of uh, Lattice Boltzmann method, there are no tunable parameters we focus on resolving physics. So what turned out to our great surprise is uh, the drag coefficient was on the mark. Lift, there was a bit of a mismatch, but once again, Lattice Boltzmann method came out on the top. Uh, it pro conveys a very, very key message here. Uh, if you are at a stage of product design where you have not done a lot of experiments uh, yet, it is important to resolve physics uh, because you do not have any experimental values to fit parameters to match the experimental results. And in such cases, once again, the use of Lattice Boltzmann method can be useful. Uh, I'm going to move away from the aerospace and automotive industry and talk a little bit about pharma industry in this case. So in pharma industry or for that matter even in chemical industry uh, the right chemistry is typically figured out uh, in the lab where you do experiments at uh, beaker scale basically at small scale and once the right chemistry is figured out then one has to perform scale ups uh, which is useful for industrial level um, production so to give an example, at in the lab, uh, when you're trying to figure out the chemistry, one would typically do uh, experiments uh, at liters level, a few liters at most. But of course, uh, an industrial production cannot be done in beakers at liters level. So one would need to scale the whole process up to hundreds or thousands of uh, liters level. So this problem is called the scale-up problem. And once again, just like aircraft and automobile, you do digital prototyping. Uh, in this pharma and biopharma industry or chemical industry, we use the concept of virtual scale-up. So when you are scaling up, one has to ensure that the reactants in the uh, reactor or the tank are well mixed. Uh, recall reaction will happen when different components come in contact with each other. So mixing efficiency is a key parameter to be looked at uh, when you are doing virtual scale up of uh, reactors or tanks. 
so that is the problem of interest here and this numerical example again a benchmark example taken from literature here many many different methods were uh, compared uh, what you see in this plot uh, these the first two rows uh, they correspond to the radial and uh, azimuthal uh, velocities and the last row correspond to um, second order quantity that is turbulent kinetic energy it is well known that the efficiency of mixing is directly proportional to uh, turbulent kinetic energy uh, I'll, i don't have time to get in the details but again we see that lattice boltzmann method does a fairly good job here and better than other techniques uh, now uh, moving further into the oil and gas industry the example that you see here comes from gasification process uh, where you start with petroleum and then you extract all the useful uh, products like LNG, naphtha, kerosene, petrol, diesel, etc, etc. And then in the end, uh, bitumen and then finally what is left is pet coke. Uh, instead of throwing that coke or coal away, uh, it can be burnt in a gasifier to produce electricity, which of course can be used in the plant itself. Uh, this is a very, very complex process. This is a very large process. Uh, these gasifiers can be as high as 30 meters. Uh, and the diameter of the gasifier can be several meters. So just imagine the size of these gasifiers. So pet coke will be fed in along with excess oxygen. Uh, the reaction takes place on the surface of coal particles. Uh, a lot of uh, energy is released. Temperatures to the level of uh, uh, 1000 to 1500 degrees centigrade is reached. So a lot of complex physics takes place where an interplay of uh, fluid dynamics, heat transfer reactions and particles uh, take place. So we have looked at this problem quite closely uh, what you see in the left hand side plot uh, this shows the velocity profile uh, inside the gasifier whereas right hand side shows the uh, temperature profile that evolves over time so these kind of simulations can be used for example to optimize the operation of such very large scale gasifiers uh, the last example that I'd like to use, um, this is a very interesting one, something that we are still working on, but I, I'd like to, I, I wanted to share it with you. Um, so multi-phase phenomena are very, of great interest for uh, researchers and engineers alike. Uh, but when you're dealing with uh, different phases uh, together in for example, air and uh, water together. Uh, there is a sudden transition when you move across the interface between different phases, which makes numerical simulation really, really challenging. So we are in the process of extending the capabilities of lattice boltzmann method for handling uh, such multi-phase uh, phenomena uh, accurately. Uh, without compromising on the physics, so no empirical modeling. So what you see here, a, a droplet is dropped on a surface and then as you can expect, there would be splashing. So we are able to successfully capture this phenomena of splashing uh, without using empirical model, that is we are resolving fluid, which gives us uh, a lot of pleasure of course. And this can be used for solving a lot of practical interests uh, practical problems in future and that brings me to the end of the presentation so uh, take home message um, the first one is obvious the use of model based approach uh, model based simulation rather for product and process design is ubiquitous now which leads to reduction in cost effort and time uh, Given the fact that compute and memory is becoming cheaper, uh, that's where one can uh, start thinking about high fidelity simulation, like larger dissimulation, uh, like lattice boltzmann method, 
uh, especially at latter stages of product design before one moves to experiment or wind tunnel experiments. Uh, Lattice Boltzmann method, which is based on kinetic theory of gases, uh, its theoretical foundations have improved over time, uh, resulting into a large number of academic publications as well as commercial tool, or in other words, LVM has come out of age. It's a promising method for uh, obtaining high fidelity uh, simulation uh, results. Uh, and through a number of examples that I showed to you. It is a sample, of course, of what we have done at Sankhya Sutra Labs, but hopefully I have, if, if not convinced you, at least I've made you curious uh, about the potential of Lattice Boltzmann method. So with this, I would conclude and hand over to Dr. Selish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Vinay, and uh, congratulations. First, would like first of my uh, sorry, I would like to congratulate first for you know coming up with this fantastic software which is capable of doing all these analytical simulation, multi-physics simulations indigenously. And I would like to ask one question, as you mentioned once, that our simulations are approximation free. There is no approximation; they are highly reliable. So I agree that they 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 would be highly reliable, but at the same time, if you don't use those high, uh, you know, approximation methods like finite difference approximation methods and all, in that case, your simulation will get really slow if you don't do don't use those. So, uh, you know, just for example, for a five minute simulation may go like more than five minutes, of course. So, is there any uh, limit for how long it goes to, or uh, you are able to? Capable to maintain them in a uh, approximate limit of the time, a acceptable limit of the time. It doesn't go very long. Right, right. So thanks for the question uh, and uh, appreciation, Dr. Selish. So your question is very, very pertinent, and that's where this uh, looking at this pyramid becomes uh, important. So you are absolutely right. Uh, if uh, one uses approximation, the speed of simulation and the computational resources one needs for performing simulation is uh, low. Uh, and uh, we, we also suggest the use of such approach, approaches when you are at early stages of design. As you move up the pyramid, uh, the simulations become more accurate, but uh, it there is no free lunch. So one needs higher compute power uh, to run such simulations and such simulations will not complete in five minutes for any practical case. Uh, they might run for several days or maybe a couple of weeks also, to be fair, uh, Dr. Shalish. Uh, and the use of such uh, high fidelity simulations um, mostly makes sense uh, if you are at a latter st stage of design cycle or you are trying to capture a physical phenomena where if you use an approximation, uh, you are going to miss the key features of the physical phenomena itself. So um, the use of this larger amount of compute has to be justified. Uh, either point number one, you are at a latter stages of design cycle and one should be comparing with the cost of experimentation and not comparing with low fidelity simulation or the physical phenomena itself is so involved that use of approximation will not suffice. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, but uh, I still want to know that if a five minute simulation goes up to an hour or two hour, it's acceptable. But what if it goes to days and days, then it may not be acceptable for the users, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So let me use a practical example here. Uh, so if you are trying to capture this flow separation uh, that is tall, uh, those five to 10 minute simulation uh, methods would not be able to capture this physical phenomena itself. Uh, and to capture stall using high fidelity methods, indeed one would need to wait for at least a day. Uh, on the other hand, for the same aer aerofile, 
if the flow is nicely attached. Uh, in that case, the five minute method, I mean, it's not actually five method, couple of hours, uh, the RANS method will do a fair job. And that's where we also suggest that uh, RANS, the use of RANS is okay. So uh, a more direct answer to your question is uh, no, uh, you, because we do not use approximations or an explicit turbulence model, we cannot uh, match the um, speed of uh, RANS or finite element kind of uh, approaches. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's uh, understood that you have to compromise if you need a really fantastic results without any compromise, then definitely you have to wait. Absolutely. And let the simulation go for very long. So, Absolutely. Doctor, uh, Dr. Vina, one more thing. Uh, so how competitive we are if we compare our uh, these analytical modules of our software with the you know the related modules of other softwares like uh, Simeon and uh, Comsol Multiphysics. So how competitive we are? Right. Um, so uh, there are certain physical phenomena, uh, for example, aeroacoustics, where uh, Take this statement with slight pinch of salt because, of course, there is no way to prove it. But for aeroacoustics, I can safely say that this indigenously developed technology is one of the best, if not the best, in the world. Uh, no matter which uh, competitor you are looking at. And over time, we are hopeful that uh, we would expand this list further. I can also use the example of this multi stage gasifier so the close coupling between fluid dynamics and uh, particle dynamics uh, i would say we are one of the best if not the best as compared to any competition so there are pockets dr uh, where uh, sankhya sutra labs is already way ahead uh, there are other uh, areas where we are uh, working on moving there hopefully soon okay <clears throat> now i would request participants to please ask questions if you have any please unmute yourself and then please ask okay uh akshay I, yes akshay I, please um, introduce yourself okay uh can i start akshay are you asking okay yeah you are audible good evening uh, thanks, Dr. Vinay. Thanks for the nice lecture. Actually, I have been working in LBM only from uh, last three years. Okay, uh, my work is basically two-phase flow. I have written my own code, but I am not able to obtain for high Reynolds flows. As I have seen the results in your case, it's Reynolds number fifty thousand, like that. Uh, it is very difficult to obtain in LBM. So, how your software make that? Right, right. So thanks for the question, uh, Sudhakar. Uh, yes, the example of uh, this Naka 0012 airfoil that I showed, that was at Reynolds number of 50,000. Uh, but there are other airfoils that we have simulated. Uh, very recently, uh, MS0313, for example, at Reynolds number of 6 million. So we are able to go up to about 9 million Reynolds number. Now coming to your question, how we are able to do it? Uh, our secret sauce is uh, the number of velocities. I mean, that's one of the key things. So we, I mean, I'm not sure which LV model you are using, maybe D3Q27 or maybe Q41. 19 I'm using. You're D3 using 19. 19. Oh, okay, wow. okay. So. I mean, without knowing the details, that is what I would suggest you look at quite closely. Uh, we use much higher LV models, uh, for example, D3Q167 or D3Q81. So if you want to handle uh, flows with uh, much higher speeds, uh, you need to look at higher order LV. LV. Okay. So uh, in this like uh, multi-relaxation time modules are there. 
right so in your case you are using mrt modules only i think we do not use mrt okay so um, yeah in, i mean I, i'm happy to have a further discussion with you sudhakar on this uh, so le let's connect offline so that others also have a chance of okay. uh, asking okay. questions but okay. uh, short answer yeah look at higher order lb models if you want to handle okay. higher reynolds number okay okay thanks 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 thank you sudhakar uh, now akshay akshay you have raised hand right yes sir yeah, thank you thank you for letting me speak sir uh, i am akshay ravi sir currently phd student at utsa uh, san antonio uh, sir i was working in iit jammu under dr samrat rao so that time we used to use mega code uh, which was developed by under dr radham narsimha so to understand the cumulus clouds and the core and structures and the, uh, uh, to understand the uh, volumetric flow rates and how the spurious velocities come over there but we the only drawback we were facing was the computational time sir actually it was running for like 15 to 20 days uh, for 300 million cells or 1.5 billion cells it was going up to a month and a half or so so i wanted to know if we combine lbdm with uh, gpu node com parallel programming how much we could able to just predict uh, cut down the computation time right right so before answering the question i'd like to make a side remark of course uh, dr rodam narsimha he during the final stages of his career he was at jnc and he was uh, closely involved in sankhya sutra labs not in any kind of official capacity in fact the name of the company sankhya sutra labs was suggested by him uh, now coming to the question um, unfortunately we have not attempted a gpu version of uh, sankhya sutra la uh, sorry of our lb code and the reason is as follows uh, we use lb models with very high number of velocities Uh, which increases the memory requirement and as you would know gpus are still evolving uh, mm -hmm. at a pretty fast pace but they still are lower on the has lower capacity on the memory side as compared to cpus uh, but lately both amd and intel has made advancement so we are just starting to look at gpus now akshay not something uh, that we have Fully resolved yet? Could you give Could you give me a, a comparison on CPU nodes, sir? How How much we would cut down, sir, if we use uh, venture into LB? Well, uh, I mean, again, we have not simulated cumulus clouds, so on the fly, I I can't uh, give an answer. But what we can tell you is, we have tried to get very close to the theoretical limit in terms of number of Uh, uh operations flops that one would be needed and the memory bandwidth but uh, to be to be very honest with you the kind of numbers you're talking about 1.5 billion uh, cells uh, running over a couple of weeks for a month uh, to me it we are in the ball park we definitely can't do that kind of compute in 5 minutes or 1 hour okay okay sir Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I hope I'll, I'll, I'm writing the code. I'm trying to write the code in LBM, sir. Uh, sure, sure. Let Let's connect Akshay and we can. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable valuable time. Thank you. Thank you, Akshay. Anybody else? Please uh, unmute yourself. Please ask the question. Priyanshu, Ravi, Somya, Shiva Kumar, Varun. Any question from you guys? any doubt any doubt dr divya ravi is uh, i think vinay vinay oh it's okay it's with you okay i think ravi has a question yeah i said uh, thank you for the presentation so okay, sir so go ahead suppose if you are doing for uh, only fluid flow simulation so uh, in uh, normal navier stokes we need to solve only three equation four equations but here uh, at least we have to solve 27 equations so this is 
computationally little expensive. Suppose if we are doing same higher order DNS simulations using Navier Stokes or uh, using LBM, can we compare how fast it is when compared to normal uh, DNS of Navier Stokes or some open form simulations or something? Right, right. So I will answer your question in parts. Uh, once again, uh, numbers for one or the other method, it depends on the example. But uh, at a conceptual level, you are absolutely right. When you're solving Navier Stokes, you are solving four equations. Uh, but the point that you have to keep in mind, uh, and let me just quickly bring up that slide again. So it is not only the number of uh, equations that you're trying to solve matter. Uh, what also matters is how you are solving those equations. So in the case of uh, lattice boltzmann method, what happens is uh, all the computations are local because particles at a given lattice, they only interact with their neighbors. Uh, and that is what allows one to parallelize the lattice boltzmann method as well. Uh, but even if you leave the parallelization part out, uh, the key point is uh, th these are all uh, local operations. But if you take the example of uh, solving a Poisson equation where you would need to invert a matrix, uh, yeah, the amount of computation one would need would be, of course, very, very high. So that way, uh, I would not say that just the number of equations uh, can give you a sense about which method is faster or slower. Uh, the fact that you said still, of course, stays. We are solving a method with 27 velocities, and actually <laughs> much higher number of velocities. So LB will require more memory for sure as compared to a typical finite volume approach. Uh, how do we compare with uh, open form? So if you are looking at RANS, uh, do recall uh, RANS gives you, again, let me go back here. So RANS give you the steady state features of the flow. Uh, you should be looking at LES or LBM if you are interested in more flow features and here, things are dynamic simulation, transient simulation. So that way, comparing between these two is not uh, quite fair. So I think uh, we can do DNS in uh, normal things also, Navier Stokes also, isn't it? So LES and the DNS. Well, DNS, uh, I'm not sure what exactly you have in mind, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, DNS for practical problems, uh, it's not possible today. Maybe in future, when we have access to exascale clusters on, maybe even beyond. Uh, in one sense, lattice Boltzmann method, it is between LES and DNS. So as I was explaining uh, some time back, we do not use an explicit turbulence model. So uh, as you make more and more compute available, the accuracy of LBM goes from LES towards DNS. So that way LB is uh, a sub DNS kind of approach and in the limit, it will approach DNS. So that way LB uh, will always be cheaper as compared to DNS is what I would say. Thank you, sir. I have one more question, sir. Yeah. Uh, so here LBM is defined on uniform Cartesian grid. So how okay. do we resolve curvilinear geometry? Suppose if we want to resolve flow over a cylinder or sphere, so we cannot take step cylinder or something. Even if we use spinal grid, it will be a step cylinder or a cuboid or something like that. Absolutely, excellent observation and excellent question, Ravi. So indeed, uh, this is a limitation, and there are some things that we have done and we are doing to handle this. So first of all. That is the reason why we do not use a simple Cartesian mesh. Once again, let me just pull up the right slide to, to be able to explain better. Um, right, so uh, yeah, this is, here we are trying to capture the curvature of a sphere and indeed 
uh, it's the the simple cubic mesh does not do a great job. Now we use what is called body centered cubic mesh, and the simplest way to look at it is let's say you have one cubic mesh, you take another cubic mesh, move it by 45 degrees, uh, and then you use that body centered cubic mesh. So that can be seen as in one sense a cut cell kind of approach and that is why you see better match of course there are still steps by all means and as you refine your mesh the size of step will become smaller and smaller so that is how far we have gone so uh, till now uh, we are looking at uh, other methods uh, to handle the um, curvature of uh, sphere and cylinders in a better manner uh, of course, another another uh, point related which you did not ask, but it is related. Uh, how do we maintain mass balance? Because uh, if there is a step, part of the grid will be inside the body. So that way there would be uh, loss of mass. Uh, but in LB, you use uh, bounce back boundary conditions uh, and we implement it proper. If we implement it properly, then uh, that loss of mass because part of the grid is inside the geometry can be avoided. So these are two things which are done to uh, capture the the curvature, uh, which is an ongoing work, but we ensure that there is no uh, loss of mass by using bounce back conditions. Okay, so one final question. Uh, yeah, recently I have seen some methods, uh, they have combined uh, LB methods with the traditional FD, FE methods. There they are transforming governing equations into curvilinear coordinates. So can you comment on those things? Um, so it's a valid uh, point. I, I think wherever possible, one can certainly look at that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in no position, we have not looked at it yet very, very carefully, but let's say if you look at practical problems, I mean, sure, if you're looking at a, a sphere or a cylinder, uh, it may be possible easily, but if you look at practical problems, can you really transform, make use of such uh, transformations is where I have a doubt. But otherwise, yeah, it's a valid method. And that's what I'd say. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your very, very pertinent questions, Ravi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ravi. Any any other question from any participants? Please raise your hand. Any question in the chat? Okay. All right. So it seems like there are no further questions. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Dr. Vinay, one last question from my side. Uh, is our software compatible running on the browser also? Or someone has to download this and then? Uh, so indeed, the user interface is being developed now and it would be a web-based user interface where uh, the solver or the backend would sit on your cluster and one can run simulations using a browser. Okay, things are going on. So work is going on. Good. Absolutely. I'm really delighted to have Dr. Vinay Kariwala in today's session. And we I really congratulate him and all his team for coming up with this software indigenously. And <clears throat> our team is also working. A team of scientists and engineers are developing such analytical softwares. That's great, actually, uh, and really good for our people. And I would like all the participants to please spread this message <coughs> that Anke Sutra Lab is having our own indigenous developed software capable of doing all the analytical simulations. And as he said already that they are uh, they are not using any approximation, so they are highly reliable. You can also use so you know Sankhya Sutra Lab to compare your results simulations. When you have your simulations ready, you cannot test it. You cannot verify it from another experiment. You can use Sankhi Sutra to re-verify, cross-verify your your simulation. So with that, with the, with that, 
uh, <clears throat> I would like to mention that next week we are coming up with uh, another. Uh, it will be one second. Uh, yes. Uh, Next week, we are coming with open source 5G test bed at ISC Bangalore. And our speaker would be Dr. Sudhakar B. He is the 5G, 5G test bed manager and senior technologist. He will be presenting about 5G test bed at ISC. Next week, same time. Okay, with that, we, we can now conclude the session. Thank you very much once again, Dr. Vinay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shalesh. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we are closing the session. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.